Look! We clones! We're all clones! Hey guys, what's going on? Third Street Reactions here. We're back. I'm Shane. Zach. We're back here with the Clone Wars. Zach, we are in the middle of the General Krell arc, and <laughs> last arc we had a sacrifice. Yeah, we did. What was his name? Hard case. Hard case. Yeah. yeah. I kept wanting to say heavy arms. And... Oh my god, he's not. He's been open because of you. <laughs> he was a sacrifice too. A sacrifice. Well, my, you know those, and I wouldn't sell them. But those little four little dudes I have now, those little miniatures, yeah. they're worth like hundreds of dollars. Yeah. And like the clean version, even like the crappy ones with like with the baseball outfit, yeah. they're worth like 150. Yeah. I had the pure ones. <laughs> now, granted, I wouldn't sell, but still, I feel like there's money I could have sitting on the shelf. Right? What would it matter then? It doesn't matter how much they're worth if it's sitting on Cause the shelf. Because it raises the sentimental value for one thing. I can't imagine why. You can't imagine why something worth a lot would raise if you love it already. And one you of find the things out... that I hold the most dearly in my life is a pair of bird's feet that my grandpa or my dad killed that is hung in the barn forever. They did it hanging on a door. They're not worth shit. Well, if you found out they're worth $100 million, what would you do? Probably sell them. <laughs> <laughs> Think that's that metal, baby. <laughs> no, I'm not. You described the arc the past few episodes just dark and very intense and personal with the clones. Yes. And Krell is a dick, and I think uh, very much the dick. world would agree with you. So, he is a dick. I think it's big a good... Big old swinging dick. Yeah, I'm sure he does have a big ass dick. He has to. You're that tall and big with that many arms. <laughs> that many arms. You couldn't have, you couldn't have a small dick. <laughs> as, as though... Like, for each set of arms, you get another dick. I'll tell you what. My dick used to be pretty big. I think we all know this. Uh, well, as I've gotten fatter, it's, it's absolutely smaller. <laughs> just because you're fat. Well, it's just, yeah, but it's like, it's in there. You know what I mean? It, it's, like, it's like true. Sure. What they, it's true what they say. Like, the fat around it just, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I go like this, and it, it's way bigger. <laughs> it just, it's just, that was funny. Okay. <laughs> Do you have any theories going into this about how everything's going to go down with the clones, with Krell, with, uh, this is, I guess this is one of the bigger battles of the Republic. You know how, uh, we saw the Senator, he was kind of scheming early on. He was like going against Padme and Mon Mothma. At the time, they were with the Republic and they have seceded since then. Mm -hmm. So we just, that kind of happened off screen, but I thought it was interesting. Uh, and of course, Palpatine, uh, one of his close confidants is on Barn. Yeah. A bald lady. I remember that. Um, anyways, I don't got anything else. I think we should just let the ARC do the talking. Guys, if you want to support us, check us out on Patreon. Say hi to us in the comments. Also, check out Attack on Titan. I legitimately think it's one of the best shows that we do. Uh, so, we appreciate you. Let's jump in. Yeah? Yeah, <laughs> sure do. I respectfully request you reconsider court-martialing Fives and Jesse. The actions of ARC Trooper 5555 and CT 5597 were a clear act of treachery and disregard for my command. If punishment isn't well, swift, disregard for your command, yeah. Treachery. Treachery is that's, that? that's a big word. Pulling that out of his ass. Well, you'd be stepping on Anakin's shoes, too, because these are his men. Yeah. Needlessly. All the more reason to send a clear message that I am in charge and insubordination will not be tolerated. Some clones are just defective. They aren't able to succumb to authority. You're right, Captain. I don't think I can court-martial them. It will only be a waste of time, and that's something we don't have. She's gonna execute them. I'm afraid they'll need to be disposed of. Prepare a squad for execution. What? B but, sir... You heard me, Captain! Have it done immediately, or I'll do it myself. Whoever passed his sentence. Yeah. You're right. We'll just kill him. Wait, what? <laughs> Maybe watching with you, I, I definitely look at this arc better. Because it is, when I get past all the darkness, it is pretty cool. Like, the different sci-fi look of it. I'm sorry. General Krell has ordered your execution immediately. What? But how? He can't do this. He has authority to render punishment during combat. I can understand a court martial. I won't let him get away with this. Ah, don't beat yourself up about it. We made our choice. We know what the price was. Yeah, speak for yourself. Yeah, I'll be kicking and screaming. <laughs> Still got your sense of humor, I see. I've officially lost my sense of humor. This is what comes from Empire Building. Empire Building? It's from uh, one of my favorite movies, Breaker Morant. Ready, weapons? Never thought we'd go out this way. Shoot straight, you bastards. Don't make a mess of it. Who says, does he say that in the movie? Wait! This is wrong, and we all know it. 
The general is making a mistake. No clone should have to go out this way. We are loyal soldiers. We follow orders, but we are not a bunch of unthinking droids. We are men. We must be trusted to make the right decisions, especially when the orders we are given are wrong. Fire! What happened? They're doing the right thing, Dogma. Take off their binders. No, we have orders. We have. Fucking Dogma is gung ho. Let's give it his name. The douche. You are making a mistake by crossing me, clone. It's Captain, sir. Make sure the troops are aware that the enemy may disguise themselves as clones to try to trick us. I will, sir. Is that against rules of war? Well, yeah. Geneva Convention kind of shit, but... Yeah. I'm sure they don't have a Geneva Convention. Yeah. Watch. I'm pretty sure that plant is called Death's Embrace. Well, it looks like it. We're under attack! Where's the enemy? I don't know, I can't see anything! Anyone have a visual? Ah, negative, it's too dark. Oh, wait, I see them! They're disguised as clones, alright. Ability, napalm strikes, like a knob. Yeah, they had one the first episode, you actually said, like yeah. Vietnam. I don't know, where are they at now? Tell me, who gave you the orders to attack us? It... It was General Krell. <coughs> he sent us to these coordinates to stop the enemy. It was... You. First time we saw a, shit. We saw, first time we saw a tear, too, in the, the show. My orders are, we arrest General Krell for treason against the Republic. Yeah, it is. Precursor for it. Yeah. <laughs> what? The fucking guy sucks. General Krell, you're being relieved of duty. It's treason, then. Surrender, General. You're committing mutiny, Captain. Explain your actions. Let me get close to that motherfucker. I had to shoot him in the leg. General, you're outnumbered. You dare to attack a Jedi? Kind of sets a precursor though for, uh, I shouldn't say a precursor, but putting close minds to Jedi on. Yeah. Do that, sir. You're all traitors. I used to believe that being a good soldier meant doing everything they told you. Take him to the brig. Troopers, don't let General Krell escape. Got a pretty good head start. Yeah. As long as Qui-Gon let the whole world knew about his one 
force feed move that only he did one time in one movie, yeah. <laughs> then you know you can put a Eevee out of there. He's coming. The funny one of those fucking plants got him. Yeah. You should have listened to the Ark Trooper from the beginning, Captain. Captain. <laughs> You've all been my pawns. Get him! Ah! <laughs> oh, we had to take a lot of great care here and slicing them up for Cartoon Network. Body parts flying everywhere. Yeah, I think there's like even a certain amount of people they can show dying. That was a good move. Captain Rex, this is top. If you can, force the general towards me. What? Why? Dowie. He's so fucking careful walking through there. I know, dude. I couldn't even. What if you stepped on a baby one? Couldn't even fuck it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you have to be sure. I think you'd be cutting shit up. Yeah. I think you'd get out of there with the sabers. Yeah, you think so. Whatever <laughs> goes. <laughs> <laughs> I stunned him, sir. But you're a Jedi. How could you? A Jedi? <laughs> I am no longer naive enough to be a Jedi. A new power is rising. I've foreseen it. The Jedi are going to lose this war, and the Republic will be ripped apart from the inside. I've fallen all of your orders, and you make me kill my brothers! <laughs> That's because you were the biggest fool of them all, Dogma. I counted on blind loyalty like yours to make my plan succeed. <laughs> as long as Krell's alive, he is a threat to every one of us. I agree. Turn around. Step toward the wall. <laughs> a little eye roll. <laughs> You're in a position of power now. How does it feel? I said, on your knees. It feels good, doesn't it? But I can sense your fear. Eventually, you'll have to do the right thing and- <laughs> No! <laughs> I... I had to. God is dead. Yeah. Someday, this war is gonna end. Then what? We're soldiers. What happens to us then? What'd you think, man? That was good. I thought so, too. Yeah. I'm glad Krell got his. Krell got his. So he, he wasn't just some hard ass. He, he just literally wanted to take them out. Yeah, wanted to kill them all. And yeah, he just wanted to kill them all, and he literally put them against each other. And I, I'm very impressed with how they animated kind of like that realization mm -hmm. and like that tragedy that they felt. Yeah, this was, I mean, the development of the clones in this arc was really good. I agree, yeah. D. Bradley Baker. Yeah, I thought, I mean, this is, I think, one of his best performances, obviously, having to emote that. I, <clears throat> I really liked it, yeah. I did like the action stuff as well. I thought it was pretty cool, General Crow, when he actually took out his sabers and... Things like that. It is hard to kill a Jedi. It was a little over the top when he was laughing and jumping around. Oh, well, a little bit. Fucking... Well, I thought it was a little over the top, even though I liked it when he was, you know, when they didn't know where he was. And he's like... That's what know. I'm saying. He's laughing and jumping around up there. Oh, okay. I thought you meant when... Oh, when he came from... He did come from above, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. I think he's up there saying and he's echoing. He's like jumping around, like laughing. <laughs> over here on this side. <laughs> okay, over here, though. <laughs> Gotta really sell it. I wanted to show you, actually... If you have Disney Plus, maybe we'll watch it down there. How hard it is, like, when you don't have a Jedi on your side. Um, in the Bad Batch, which takes place after the Clone Wars, I know you know a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. But they had to go against just regular B1s or Joy Decas, and they, it's a hard fight. It's hard to fight Joy Decas without a Jedi. No problem. Yeah, and uh, it, it was, we ha I have one of the best action scenes I'm going to show you. The Jedi, I think we take for granted just how powerful they are, and it's kind of whimsical, the way, like, you know, like, the show is whimsical in nature. Mm -hmm. Uh, but when you strip all that away, like, you know, the even though the B1s are just kind of security droids, they're like biosensors that they converted to, like, they mass-produced yeah. just to hold a gun. Now, discounting Revenge of the Sith because we had, like, I think it was a surprise attack. You know what I mean? They shot a lot, a lot of Jedi got shot in the back. I think the majority of Jedi 
were shot in the back, actually. I think I read that somewhere. It is kind of hard to take out a Jedi. He's probably a little more formidable than most. Mm -hmm. But we talked about the double-bladed and how usually it's it's symbolic of, like, attack and aggression. Yeah, that's um, what, like, Lucas even said. Yeah, and uh, the I think the Jedi temple guards have them, but because they're guards, right? And he has... He has them, and he's also kind of a, a dark sider now. You know what I mean? He became disillusioned with the Jedi. He, I mean, he is right. The Republic's going to fall apart. The Jedi are going to lose. But he misread uh, the situation, though. Yeah. You know, I, I guess, you know, what I'm trying to really examine, like how someone probably is wiser than the average person, having, like, you know, the Jedi archives and all this knowledge of the whole universe ahead of you, how they, how they get to that point. Yeah, I mean, of what? Get to where he got. Like right, Dooku, I guess. Yeah, I mean, Dooku was a little more. Well, it's a little, little more believable because of because Qui Gon and like, I guess yeah. Qui Gon was kind of the final straw, though. Yeah, when you he saw was, the, he was already in City of clutches. Yeah, I think that backstory made it even better. Like, it made it a little more believable. Mm. Um, but like, and I'm not I'm not criticizing it, uh, but you know, he did turn bad. You know, what I mean, like Dooku, I felt like. He turned, and then he started turning bad when he embraced the dark side. Yeah. This guy's like, fuck it, I'm going to kill these guys, make sure Dooku gets his planet, and he'll reward me, and I'll be there for this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, he, uh, he, he made a pretty hard turn. It was a hard turn, and I didn't know before this. The guy this. that was raised up. Yeah, he was general. raised up, and he is, like, renowned and known for being, like, a legendary general. So I guess the only thing I can say is maybe they, he was always a bad egg. Might have been, yeah. Um, but I, I agree. Or he's, or he's, you know... Symbolic of how the rot within the order, or that yeah. corruption. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, you know, they haven't really shown a lot of examples of. N not a lot, but Filoni and George, they do talk about it. How it is there, um, and you know, Luke is like a, you know, he is a new kind of Jedi. He has to be because the old way didn't work. Mm -hmm. So that's why it was kind of important for Yoda to say what he was saying, and you know, maybe take out that whole celibacy thing. That would have fucking saved everyone, wouldn't it? Let's your Kyrie Monday. Yeah, he got his. Yeah, he got to. Yeah, he got to have a lot of fun. You did. You you did call the fact that they used uh, the. T uh, I'm not sure if it's flora or fauna. It's kind of both. Whatever that thing is, I guess it's more flora because it is a plant. Yeah. Uh, they they did use that to their advantage. Flora fauna. Yeah, flora fauna. No, I I thought it was cool. I, I like the action and just the performance of the clones and like you said, you said you had a good word. The development of them, I thought in this episode. A lot of it reminded me of one of my favorite movies, an older movie too. I believe it was made in the 80s called Breaker Morant. Breaker Morant. It stars Edward Woodward. Okay. Who's also of uh, the Wicker Man, the original Wicker Man with Christopher Lee. Didn't see that. And Hot Fuzz fame. I think that was his last movie was before there... he died. Oh, okay. So like the Hot Fuzz movie that came out a few years ago. Yeah, with like the 10 Simon years. Pegg and Nick yeah. Ross. Okay. Okay. Now, I have... He's the old man that runs the little monitor room in the back of the police station. Well, we have visitors. I uh, so they do they have a scene in there where the they're fighting each other or something. Well, it's based off a true story. It was made by an Australian filmmaker. It's about it's a story about Australians that served in um, the Boer War yeah. in South Africa, the Second Boer War. Boer. And Boer. Boer. Okay. They uh, they were Dutch and um, Huguenot and other settlers in South Africa, basically European settlers. Yeah. That had been there for some time, and they developed these other republics down there, and the British weren't having that. The British could not have a United States of Africa. Those were Cecil Rhodes' words. And Cecil Rhodes is a big player in so South Africa. So what would Africa be now if they if that would have happened? <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people will argue that called urban racism is shit because you would have had because there was racism there. Yeah. But I'm sure economically speaking, they'd have been a hell of a lot better off. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Like a lot better off, and probably it, it, substantially well, because if you look at the dime, the 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 mineral ores, mm -hmm. the natural resource that is there that they found in yeah. the Transvaal. Which is like there is just a huge diamond deposit. I'm still, I'm pretty sure it's still like the number one place in the world for a diamond deposit. I could be wrong. Okay. Well, and, I think you're you're on to something with the minerals because I just on the Joe Rogan podcast, there's this reporter on there who's dedicated his life, and within Africa, I'm pretty sure it's Africa. I hope it's not China. I'm pretty sure it's in Africa. Mm -hmm. There are these mines, where at the only place in the world where we get these specific elements that we need for batteries. Lithium. Okay. Right. It, it, Lithium it, mines. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Um, and like ninety percent of name? the world, like Elon Musk. Yeah, he's a South Africa. He's an Africaner. Yeah, he's from South Africa. Yeah, 
I'm pretty sure his dad owned a lithium mine. Okay. And yeah, lithium, diamonds, gold. Yeah. Like they are there's a very rich yeah. deposit, especially that they found there. And all of a sudden these two little Boer Republics of the British were like, ah, started getting fucking rich yeah. because they found this shit on their land. Okay. And their countries. And they started buying up all these weapons from Germany and shit. And How'd you feel about that scene when the, oh, when the soldiers couldn't do it? Did you think that was cool? Did you think it was a little realistic or unrealistic? Or? Well, I have to wonder how realistic it is. I don't know. Because if they were all, I guess, getting the feeling, mm-hmm. then yeah, it makes sense. But if you look at places like, uh, well, you know, Stauffenberg, Von Stauffenberg, the guy that Tom Cruise portrayed yeah. in Val- Valkyrie. Yeah. How they executed his ass. Yeah. But the regime was in charge, and they were all kind of... Yeah. It was a very strict sense of yeah. what was going on. Well, I think... Well, I thought you might be thinking about how easily they fought Order 66, but they were... They were well, also, I understand. I know that there's a fucking thing. Yeah, there's something that like, controls Chip. them, but they all yeah. start waking up from it now, and they're all... Like, the, the episode I want to show you, I was talking about, has Commander Cody. He comes back. And he's just like, we all got to live with our things that we've done. And it's just really nuanced. And it's so good. Yeah, I think you'd really like Which it. Which one was he? He is the one that uh, Palpatine co- uh, contacted in Revenge of the Sith. Commander Cody. No, but who did he shoot? He shot at Obi Wan Kenobi. He ordered the fight. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyways, guys, uh, hope you like the reaction. If you want to support us, uh, just leave a comment down below. Check out our merch. We're out of here, guys. Thank you so much for watching our reaction. Like I said, we have merch. We have this. We have shirts. We have hoodies. We have other things. Also, uh, also support us on Patreon. We have the next two weeks on there. Now we appreciate you guys. Thank you. We'll see you soon.